We're back. We're talking heads. Tina Weymouth, Chris Fance, Jerry Harrison, and y'all, David Byrne. Um. Stop Making Sense, directed by the great Jonathan Demme, is coming up on its 40th anniversary, and it's it, A24 has re-released it. It's it's in theaters now, been out for a month now. Um, David, how did this come about? The company that had the distribution rights before, the contract ran out, and their rights... After 40 years, it just ran out. Yeah, it ran out, and their <laughs> rights reverted to us. Uh, and Did you guys because... get back together to watch it? Like, what? how did this come about, where you're, you're out here, you know, essentially promoting it. Well, we then took advantage of the fact that we owned it and said, okay, is there a distribution company, a film company, that would like to put this out properly now? And luckily, A24 said, yes, we'd like to put it out. And in theaters, not just dump it back onto streaming, we'd like to really do a new sound mix and get a print from the negative and make it all look as good as it can go. Jerry, I understand you were involved in the remastering That's of the right. sound for this. What was that process like? Well, we actually remixed it more than remastering because nowadays there are these multi-channel speaker systems in, in theaters. Um, and so it actually was more difficult than you would think because we had to find everything. And then things would be, you'd play it, and uh, it would go out of sync at some point. Um, but eventually we did find that the negative, amazingly, was in... Uh, a warehouse in Kansas that MGM has, which had nothing to do with the film. So it was really good that we started early. And I worked with a wonderful mixer who wor worked on really the original album of, of Stop Making Sense, E.T. Thorngren. And then we went back to the, actually the same film studio, which had been called uh, Warner Hollywood, and before that, Tadeo, and now The Lot. And so there was sort of a sort of symmetry going back to where we were in 84 when we mixed it. What, what, was it, what was it like to see this film, to watch you guys perform 40 years later on an IMAX? Chris, you first. What, what was that? What were the emotions with that? Well, it's a beautiful movie. <laughs> and my wife is in it. And what a babe. I mean, <laughs> when I... When I... <laughs> and you have every... Well, when I look at it, I just think, oh. Chris, you did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's an incredible group on stage. It's amazing. Bernie Worrell, um, Alex Weir. How did this group come together, David? I'm going to give that to, to Jerry, I think. Yeah, I, it, it started with, of course, the tour for Remain in Light, where we had played so many parts, we go, we can't quite tour and play all of this at the same time. And we actually had the opportunity, because we were playing in Central Park in a a festival where we were in Canada called in Mossport near Toronto. We go, let's do an experiment and let's try having a bigger band. And I had been kind of hanging around in New York and I'd met Bernie and I had produced um, Nona Hendrix and I was hanging around with this guy, Busta Jones. And so one afternoon I said, I'll go out and hire some people. And Adrian, who had played on the album, I called him and called Buster and, and Dolette and Bernie, and they all go, sure, we'll do this. And we found Steve the next I came back to the studio and went, we have the best band in the world. I can't believe this. <laughs> and then, then Adrian went off to join King Crimson, and we found Alex Weir, sort of through Quincy Jones, I think. And Yes. You know, and, uh, and then we just kept doing it. And we, were, we weren't sure we were going to continue in, but we, once we were on stage with the whole band, we go like, this is too much fun. Too funky, we gotta keep doing this. Now, I understand, I just found this out recently, and I can't believe I didn't know this. The Ed Sullivan building is familiar to y'all. What did you do here in this building? What did you record well, we, here? We, we recorded some of, and mixed some of our most loved songs. Uh, we did Remain in Light, was, you did the vocals, and some, some overdubs. Where and, in the building? I just wanna go build a small shrine. It was, it was Sigma, Sigma Sound, yes. and it was on, I think, the 8th and ninth floor. Mm -hmm. It was two floors. And uh, we did, so we worked on Remain in Light. We worked on Speaking in Tongues, Burning Down the House, you know? And we worked on Little Creatures, mm -hmm. 
True uh, stories. True stories. Uh, so and it's part of Naked here too. Yep, mm -hmm. that's yep. right, some of Naked. Yep. And it, it was, you know, the Stones were here, the Beatles were here, so were we. we were <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one quick story about sort of my devotion to Talking Heads. When I, so you guys are the, the most dominant band for me when I'm in college. And I have the most time to listen to the most music. And my senior year, senior week, school's over, we haven't graduated yet. We all go to the Jersey Shore, me and some friends. And we stop in Philly and stay at a friend's of a friend's house. And we're listening to Talking Heads. And the parents of the kids who are friends of the friends whose house we're in goes, oh, you know, the burning down the house house is around here. And it's from the video where, like, the flames are projected on the outside of the house and your face is on the outside saying, watch out. That was right around the corner. So we just drove and sat in front of the house and looked at it. <laughs> it was just like a center hall colonial house. We were like, here we are. We're at the house. Yeah. Yeah. We got to take another little break here, uh, but don't go nowhere. It's Talking Heads. Thank <laughs> you.